Hunter-gatherers never had access to fusion, but if they did, they'd probably follow the first rule of fusion. Start by creating a new component for their design. The first sketch lays the foundation for the bottom. You learn a workaround that unlocks creative possibilities by trimming parts of a circle and creating a section extending to the right, which will be removed later. The offset plane sets up a sheet metal loft with a taper angle. You can easily reuse the base geometry with the project command. Linked projected lines are easy to identify by their purple color. And any updates to the original sketch will automatically update these lines, including the offset line. The small symbol indicates that the line is linked. Flange is in the sheet metal tab and we're using the lofted flange to prepare for later stages of the workflow. Use the fusion timeline to edit the flange feature if you want to switch the forming type to die form for a different look. Just to clarify, this is a rapid concept and I'm not considering any specific manufacturing methods in this tutorial. Pay attention when unfolding your design to ensure you create and extrude features on the correct side of the bowl. In my case, it's the back of the bowl, opposite the home view in the view cube. I'm inserting a licensed SVG file for this design. Licensing work from talented creators is a great way to combine your fusion skills with their creativity to produce amazing results. I'll quickly scale and position the sketch. It doesn't need to be perfect since we can refine it later. This approach is why I didn't extrude a solid body with a taper angle. I wanted to build this concept with a flat design. The green color indicates that the fixed constraint is applied. We'll remove it to work with each part individually. We'll also simplify the sketch by trimming away unnecessary parts. A quick tip, when using the trim tool, press and hold to speed up the process. Just make sure to avoid trimming the parts you want to keep. Make sure you're in the contextual sketch environment when moving your sketches. Don't stress about placing them perfectly at first, just find a good enough position and refine it later. Remember to confirm each move with the OK button. I'll fast forward here since you get the idea. We're back after a quick jump forward. Remember to save your progress regularly. Let's project a line from the underlying geometry and convert it into a construction line. This will act as a guide for positioning our sketches symmetrically. You can align your sketches around it for a cleaner, more balanced design. Repositioning the sketches in Fusion is smooth and intuitive. I'll fast forward again to skip the fine tuning so you can stay focused on the bigger steps. It's easy to select all sketch faces. Make sure to set the extrude operation type to join. This step refolds the extruded bodies back into the original component. It's easier to apply an appearance to all the hunter-gatherers when they're laid out like this. Start with one of the preset appearances, then tweak the color code for a perfect look and balance across your design.
If you're looking for inspiration, custom color codes online can be a great resource. Applying appearances one by one felt right until I got to the sides. Thankfully, Fusion offers flexibility so you can achieve the same result through different workflows. A faster approach is to apply the blood red color to the entire body first, then add a bone white color to just the face. Start by duplicating your color and naming it for easy reference. Add your RGB or hex color code. I didn't memorize this one either, I found it online. The internet is huge for things like this. Pay attention to the Apply to setting. Switch from bodies and components to faces to pull this off. As for the large red section on the left, don't worry, we'll clean that up shortly. We're finished designing the unfolded part. Let's refold it and move on to shaping the bowl. Regularly check your design from different angles to catch small errors before they turn into bigger issues. It's a simple but effective habit. Extrude is a versatile tool for adding or removing geometry. Switching the extent type from distance to all ensures that your extrude cut adapts to future design changes. Now, we're right where we want to be, but it's time to address that big hole in the bowl. Let's start with the sketch for the bottom. Use the project tool to capture the outer geometry of the bowl. Since this geometry only spans 270 degrees, I'll add a center diameter circle that snaps to it. The sizing might seem off compared to the original 100mm circle, but that's due to the added sheet metal thickness and the lofted angle. Repeat the process on the custom construction plane we set up earlier. Make sure you select the correct plane so the projected sketch line and center diameter circle align at the correct height. Everything aligns perfectly when we use the view cube to check from the home view angle. Connecting the lines with loft is simple. Just ensure you select the loft command in the surface modeling workspace. It's easy to spot with its orange icon. This lofted surface has an infinitively thin thickness. So we'll use the thicken command to give it the same thickness as the rest of the bowl. I'll change the operation type to join, creating a single sheet metal body. We'll close the bottom of the model, a common step when working with surfaces. The patch command is perfect for this. The patch surface will appear in the project browser and we'll use Thicken to join it seamlessly with the rest of the bowl. The latest part of the bowl still carries the blood red color from earlier. We'll apply the bone white color to this face instead. For the bottom edge, both fillet and chamfer work well. I chose chamfer because it fits the style of the bowl. 
but with Fusion, you can easily switch later by editing the action in the timeline. I'm just turning off the visibility of the origin here, but it won't affect the modeling outcome. The full round fillet is great for achieving parametric roundness on the edges. By parametric, I mean the fillet adjusts automatically if you change the part's thickness. In this case, applying a fillet didn't work out as expected, which was a useful lesson. You'll see why shortly. Let's lay the foundation for the curved top of the bowl. This can't be done with the revolve tool alone. First, create a sketch in the central construction plane above the origin. I'm using a fit point spline for control and flexibility, but other tools like lines and arcs will work depending on the desired outcome. I'll over sketch since precise alignment with the bowl isn't necessary. One advantage of using surface modeling is the ability to quickly sketch and refine later. Extrude exists in both the solid and surface modeling environments, but we need to use the surface modeling extrude for splines or other open profiles. Once you've selected the spline, switch to a symmetric extrude. Don't worry about aligning it with the bowl, just over extrude it slightly. The purpose of this infinitively thin surface is to serve as a tool so its size doesn't matter as long as it's bigger than the bowl. Split body is a great command for precise splits. The bowl is the body to split and the curved surface is the splitting tool. Nothing will look different after hitting OK, but don't worry. A new body appears in the project browser. Just turn off the visibility of all bodies except the bowl. And that's it. You've completed this Fusion tutorial where we explored some out-of-the-box workflows. I often look at things and think about how I would approach them in Fusion. Continuously adding new workflows to your mental toolkit is a great habit. If you found this helpful, it really means a lot to a small channel like this if you hit that subscribe button. I'll answer all questions, so feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Check the video description for discounts and other learning resources. This video was inspired by the one with the cat on a cup. Be sure to check it out. I also recommend the linked video with the 3D printed lampshade, which is getting great feedback from viewers. Thank you and good luck with your projects in Autodesk Fusion.